Hello, my name is Lois and welcome to today's video. So if you want to get anywhere in life, I feel like you need goals and if you don't have any goals then you're not getting anywhere. And I just didn't really make any solid reading goals and I know it's February, it's getting a bit late, but also it's never too late. So at the moment I'm reading Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and this has been taking me a while. I've been reading this since early January and it's going pretty well. I'm like, I passed page 300 out of 420 and this book is pretty juicy to be honest. I kind of, in my mind, I lumped all of the women's classics kind of in the same category. You know, Pride and Prejudice, Little Women, Jane Eyre. They are so, so different. I feel like Little Women was very wholesome, very chill, just following the lives of this family and these four sisters. I can tell you now that Little Women is very, very different from Jane Eyre. And I want to thank one of the commenters who was recommending Jane Eyre in one of my videos a while ago, because otherwise I don't know how likely it is I would have picked it up anytime soon. But as it stands, I've been really enjoying it. Um, I'm pretty sure I had read a couple of spoilers online at, at some point, but either way it didn't make a massive difference because whilst I've been reading it, I've still been very much like gripped, like what on earth is going to happen next in this story to this poor woman. Um, but yeah, the romance in this is crazy. Like the dialogue is beautiful, like the whole writing style. Sometimes I read bits aloud to help me get in the flow of it and it just sounds so beautiful. So, so far I'm really recommending Jane Eyre and I can't wait to see what happens. Is it going to be a happy ending or not? I don't really know. So this is one of the six Cranford Collection Timeless Classics that I own and they are just so gorgeous. Um, they do wear a little bit but you know that's going to happen if you're carrying a book round with you. But um, they're just really really gorgeous copies and I'm so glad that I have this to read. But I have to say it has gotten to the point where I don't really know what to read next because I have such a long list of books to read. Um, both including and not including the ones that I don't even own yet. But yeah, I have a couple of books on my DNF list, my did not finish. So, so far we have short stories in Italian. And I think there's still hope for this one because it is a series of short stories. So I can just pick up where I left off fairly easily. And I think this will be really good to get me back into language learning in a way that isn't just Duolingo because I'm a champion at Duolingo, but how much am I actually learning on it is a bit questionable but hopefully I'll come back to that one very soon. Um, it's just I don't like to have too much going on at once. I already have my C.S. Lewis devotional book, reading my bible, reading at the moment Jane Eyre. I think four books at once, it feels a bit much, is that right? Four? Yeah, that would be too much I think. And the other in my do not finish pile is A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. And I bought this in Florence and I was reading this in Florence because it is set in Florence and I just thought, oh, I should read a book that's set in the place where I am, that will be fun. Um, but whilst I was in Florence, I was really quite busy. I was doing a course that required quite a lot of work. I was also trying to do as much sightseeing as I could. I was kind of living on my own for that month, so I was getting a bit lonely, which meant that I was just phoning friends and family quite a lot. I found it really hard to switch off and read so I didn't get very far with this maybe like a third of the way through and it just wasn't that exciting to be honest I wasn't that impressed by any of the characters but either way I don't know if I should go back to this or just leave it for now I think it's likely that I'm gonna leave it but if anyone thinks it's really worthwhile um, persevering and getting back into a room with a view then please let me know and I just want to say as well, thank you so much for all the recommendations people have put in the comments because there are so many and I don't read that quickly but I would love to get around to reading all the books you recommended. So for now I'm just planning to go through the books I already have and perhaps I'll get some of the ones you've recommended um, for my birthday or something later on in the year. I'm especially keen to get a couple more of the C.S. Lewis books to add to my collection particularly The Abolition of Man and The Weight of Glory. But now let's head over to my bookshelf and let's have a look at what we've got and what is looking high up on my list. 
First up we have the the Christian shelf, I would call this. Not everything is very exclusively Christian. We've got some Jordan Peterson here and it's very uh, debatable, is he a Christian or not? It's a big thing. And we also have Dominion by Tom Holland who is also like, you know, one of those people who are on the edge of being Christian and not. But generally on here we have a few Bibles, um, devotionals. Is there anything on here I'm really desperate to put into the pile? I think I'm going to put Tom Holland's Dominion into the pile of books to possibly read this year. Is there anything else on here? There's a book called Rich Wounds that I got at a church when I was at uni and I'm kind of curious about it so maybe I'll put that on the pile as well. Oh yeah, this has also ended up on this bookshelf. Uh, it's a philosophy book, um, not Christian as far as I know, um, called Think by Simon Blackburn. So we'll put that on my little pile as well. Yeah. So the next shelf is potentially my favourite shelf on my bookshelf. And a good half of it, maybe like two thirds of it, is made up of my C.S. Lewis collection, um, which is looking very nice there. Uh, then I keep my little toiletries bag on there just because it's a convenient place and I also have this gorgeous postcard um, that my Singaporean friend gave me. It's really cute. And then we have my three Lord of the Rings books, although I suppose technically it's one long book. And then I have the complete works of William Shakespeare. So I finished reading the Narnia books last year. Um, I think I might put the Space Trilogy into my pile of books to read because I've been wanting to read these for quite a while and a friend of mine at church is also um, reading the first one out of the Silent Planet so let's put those over there. I also have C.S. Lewis How to Be a Christian, The Discarded Image, oh dear all my books are going to collapse because I'm taking so many out. We also have Miracles and The Four Loves. Add them to the pile! Okay, these, these are not going to be thrown. And finally we have the last shelf of my bookshelf, which is just a lot of fiction. So let's see what I haven't read that I want to. Okay, we have... Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. I've got to be careful about throwing this one because it's quite heavy. We have a very beautiful copy of Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Now, I have a few Dostoevsky works here, but I'm feeling a little bit intimidated. I don't really know where to start. First of all, we have Crime and Punishment. I love this edition. I think I got it for my birthday. I just really like the Everyman's Library versions of classics. We also have Notes from the Underground, which I think I started and read like maybe a chapter of. And then we also have a copy of the Karamazov brothers, all the brothers Karamazov. Now, I'm feeling a bit intimidated by Dostoevsky, so out of these three, do you guys have any recommendations of what I should start with? If you do, please let me know. I have a couple of Hemingway books here. I have The Snows of Kilimanjaro and Across the River and Into the Trees. So if either of these you know are very good, let me know too. Um, because I read A Farewell to Arms, I think it was last January, and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, let's buy more Hemingway books, and I haven't read either of the ones that I've bought. We have The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. And I found this book on a really good deal. It was £4 at this bookshop in the Lake District. Um, but I'm actually more eager to read The Left Hand of Darkness, which is another book by, by Le Guin. But I don't have a copy of that yet, so that's one of the books I'm very tempted to buy at the moment. But I'm trying to resist. We have Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I think I took this off my brother's bookshelf. I don't know if he's read it. I was just intrigued by it. So if anyone's read this and would recommend, again, put it in the comments. Right, I'm sitting down for a minute. I have found here um, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And I think my brother had to read this in sixth form. 
So I have here In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And I think my brother had to read this in sixth form at some point. I don't know much about it other than it's about a murder and an investigation. So I have The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. For some reason I found a book about money on this shelf as well. Um, money, a user's guide by Laura Watley. For some reason they were selling this at Tesco and I do love a good personal finance book. The only other book on this shelf that I'm really feeling compelled by at the moment is The Phantom of the Opera. Now I went through a big Phantom of the Opera phase when I was about 12 and I have the book and the book is actually in a box that I made in like year 8 when I was probably 12. It's kind of falling apart a bit but it's kind of cute. Oops. So here is The Phantom of the Opera and I read this a long time ago and I don't remember that much about it but I have been reading a lot of gothic novels recently so I'm quite intrigued to try reading this again and seeing if I get a new fresh impression of the story. Okay going back to my Christian um, shelf there's a couple of other books I might pull out. One of them again is like a free book I got from a church called Life Stories um, which just is like telling stories about different people and how their faith impacted them. Um, I also have a Tim Keller book that I've not got around to reading called On Death and I just thought that sounded very interesting. Oh yes, I remember what else I was thinking about. Jordan Peterson. Now, I really can't tell if it's worth reading 12 Rules for Life or not. I've tried it a couple of times before and struggled to get into it, but that was not recently. I feel like I had more of a Jordan Peterson phase in the past, but I feel like Jordan Peterson is a bit more of a gateway. I feel like Jordan Peterson led me to listening to Jonathan Peugeot and then from Jonathan Peugeot I've kind of read some of his work, um, I've read The Language of Creation and now I've kind of gone towards more like C.S. Lewis kind of books. So I'm wondering if it's worth going back to a bit of Jordan Peterson or not. I feel like I should read it at some point. Um, additionally I have a very nice signed copy of Beyond Order which I feel kind of bad for getting considering I haven't even read the first one. Um, but yeah. So here we have a big old pile of books. Some of these are in a definitely... Oh, I need to be careful here. Some of these are in the definitely yes category. For example, the Lord of the Rings books. I'm planning to read those in June and July. And Jonathan Strange and Mr. Novel, a book club that I'm going to partially take part in, is reading this. I think it could be in September or October, so that will go in the definitely yes pile. I think we're going to create a maybe over here. This is very much a maybe. I feel like the money book is a maybe. Beyond the Order is definitely a maybe, considering I've not read the first one yet. Um, let's make a probably as well over here. We have probably in cold blood. I think Nigerian Orient Express looks like I should read it in Christmas, so it will be probably yes, but not for a while. I'm feeling really quite keen on the Space Trilogy. I don't know if I'll read them all in close succession or maybe just try with one, but I think these are going to go in the probably pile as well. So I feel like with Dostoevsky, I think I might read one of them this year, but which one I'm still not sure, so let me know. Possibly one of these. Okay, this might go in the probably category actually. I might put this one as well. We also have my other Cranford collection, Timeless Classics. Um, after Jane Eyre, I will have read three out of six of them. I will still have Wuthering Heights, Sense and Sensibility, and The Age of Innocence. And I'm thinking at some point during the year. I might like to read one of those as well, so it's quite hard to plan actually. If I was reading a book a week, I could get through all of these, but my reading is not that fast, so I really have to narrow it down. 
I think this is calling for making a list. I think we need a Word document so that we can manage this schedule a little bit better. Right, I've decided the best way to manage this is to make a table. Let's insert table. Oh. Let's go 12 for each month of the year. And January. So I have made a very nice looking table. I think the problem arises is when a book takes me way longer than I had planned for. Um, for example, Jane Eyre Now, I was hoping it would take me a month and we're now going well into February. So if I get behind, then it pushes the rest of the books behind, which is difficult. Additionally, if I'm going away at some point, I don't want to bring a massive book with me. Like, there's no way I'm taking Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell anywhere apart from I don't know, but it's going to be like having a brick in my bag. Um, but anyway, so the, the book club that I'm partially following is called Game of Tomes, ran by Emmy and Karen Reads. And there are a couple of books um, on their book list for the year that I did already want to read, so I'm going to try and read them at the same time as them. And they're reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy in May and June. Now, I've already read The Fellowship of the Ring, so I just need to read The Two Towers, so let's put that down for May. Oops, The Towers. The Two Towers. And then, shall we just go back to back and then read The Return of the King in June? Let's do it. Okay. And then they have September to October, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Now, this is a very big book, so maybe I will need two months to read it. Now I think a big issue for me as well is I find numbers quite motivating and as soon as I've been reading the number of books as the number of years, like you know 23 and 23, I don't know if I want to keep that up or not because that means that I'm going to have to just read small books in order to achieve my goals or to read a lot more than I do already um, and I don't necessarily have a plan of how to get there. So I want to be realistic. Right, I think this document needs a name as well. Let's just call it book planning. Makes it simple. And then I also have a couple of the ongoing books that I'll be reading throughout the year. So what's the C.S. Lewis one called that I have? So we have a year with C.S. Lewis. So let's just put that at the bottom of our table. And then I would really like to get back into the short stories. I'd really like to get back into the short stories in Italian, so perhaps I should put that as an ongoing thing as well and give myself a challenge to just read like a chapter a week of that. And I think I might also make a document of the books that have been recommended to me um, in the comments and also any other books that I want to buy that I don't have. Um, because it's difficult, whilst I do just want to read the books that I have already, it's inevitable that I'm going to buy a few more and want to read them at specific times as well. So let's call this um, recommendations. Okay, so I've made a list of books that people have recommended me. Um, the two at the top I have, the rest of them I don't have. Um, and that's not even including books that I just want to read myself that I haven't put on a list. Um, but yeah, so we also have now our list here. So, oh, I have a big pile of books and I need to put them in, oh, in this list. Alright, let's put Jane Eyre in there as well. Okay. Oh, this is my... This is my pile of books that I'm thinking to read next. So the ones I'm really considering to put next are In Cold Blood and Out of the Silent Planet. Now, I'm curious, how do you guys feel about secondhand books? Because I'm really torn. I'm a little bit of a clean freak. And like, I love it if I find a secondhand book that is in brand new condition 
but when a book is kind of old and it doesn't have the nice fresh new book smell I feel a bit off put like this copy of um, Perlandra look the pages are all grey compared to like a new book where the pages are all white it doesn't smell that great and like I don't know I'm just a bit put off is that really bad I don't know oh I want to read it I feel like I should read it but I'm just put off here and the other one that I have a solid time for is this book called Rich Wounds. I'm pretty sure we were given this in my church, my university church, read over Lent coming up to Easter. Um, I don't know, I feel like I can be a little bit sceptical of Christian books if I don't know much about the author. Um, I think I just get worried it's going to be very wishy-washy and not that great. Um, but I don't know whether I should just put it down for my book to read over Lent anyway. Maybe I should put it down anyway for March. And let's just, just see what it's like. And now we still have a lot of the calendar to fill in. To be honest, I think I've done all I can do. I can't make any more decisions. I hate making decisions. So I'm gonna give the responsibility to you. So comment below if there are any of these books that I've gone through today that you think I really, really need to read ASAP. So get busy down in the comments and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Bye.